Thanks for listening to Dog Dish. Before we start, we'd like to say thanks to our sponsors. Porter's Pride is a raw, premium pet food with meats and vegetables locally sourced in the Pacific Northwest. Porter's Pride will ensure freedom from allergies, healthy weight loss, an increase in energy, and a reduction in the amount of stool produced. Find out more. Check out Porter's Pride at porterspriderawdiet.com. That's porterspriderawdiet.com. And thanks to Addiction Pet Foods, they offer a complete range of cutting-edge foods that provide the most advanced hyperallergenic nutrition for dogs and cats around the world. Addiction is proud to have innovated the concept of using premium proteins such as free-range venison, salmon, kangaroo, and brushtail. Addiction Pet Foods, we go to the ends of the earth for your pets. I'm Deborah Rosen. For the past 15 years, as founder and owner of Good Citizen Dog, I've been helping people to train their dogs using the science of canine behavior. What I'm going to do is help you create peaceful living with your dog. Hi, I'm Dina. I'm producing Dog Dish with Deborah. I've been training dogs for over 10 years with the Good Citizen philosophy, and together we will help you create peaceful living with your dog. Hi, Dina. Hey, Deborah. We have a great topic for today. Drum roll, please. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Crate training your dog. Hey, there's some controversy over that. Why don't you touch real quick on the pros and the cons of why people bring up about crate training your dog? I think most everyone these days understands the whole concept and they're in favor of it. However, there are still some holdovers who believe that it's inhumane. And what I'd like to say, and this is right off the Humane Society of the United States website, crate training takes advantage, I quote, Crate training takes advantage of your dog's natural instincts as a den animal. I think that's so important. Think about it. A wild dog's den is their home, a place to sleep, hide from danger, raise a family. The crate becomes your dog's den, and they can find comfort and solitude while you know they are safe and secure and not... um, shredding up your house that's right or peeing and pooing in the wrong place that's right crate training is vital not only for uh house training but it's also important for two other things dina first of all chew training and the other is called alone time training oh alone time we like alone time they like alone time too no they don't but this teaches them to ah yes all right so the true training is pretty obvious right Right. if you're not out and about you're not going to be randomly chewing on things that you shouldn't be chewing on or the electronics yeah, exactly. yeah. Electro- <laughs> i hear that a lot i get called a lot about my my dog just chewed up the th- my third cell phone or my cell phone peripherals. Well, and then then the alone time training, which basically is giving your dog the confidence to be on their own without you there, without getting into the whole area of separation anxiety, which as a trainer is probably one of the most, if not the most difficult behavior problem to resolve. It is, Deborah, and you know what? These guys are born with eight and nine dogs at a time in a pack, and then we take them all away and we put them by themselves, and then we wonder why it's a little troublesome. They're they're freaking out. That's right. So let's talk about crate training a puppy. Um, Let's start with the puppy because it's uh, it's the most obvious one that we're going to need to deal with. They have very small bladders. They have very little muscle control at, at that age. And it's important to have them start learning to develop that muscle control so that they can hold it for a period of time. Absolutely. And the rule of thumb, folks, is you can leave a puppy in a crate as long as it's age in months plus one. So let's say you have a three-month-old puppy. You could leave it up to four hours and it shouldn't have to go. No, but in the beginning, I would also suggest, as I know you do, maybe be more preemptive. So while their muscles are weaker and they're establishing control and they're eating more frequently, Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to need to eliminate more frequently. So basically, the first thing in the morning, you want to take that puppy out out for sure right Mm -hmm. lickety split don't let it walk on its own actually pick it up carry it put it on it on a leash right yeah and then further you'll get the potty training podcast for what to do once they're on the leash and out but don't leave them in that crate when you first get up because what could they end up doing in that crate soiling it that's right and so 
the, the puppy's natural instinct is not to soil its own sleeping space. And to that end, you don't want a crate that's too large because they'll go over to a corner. That's right. They might even, if there's a blanket in there, they'll pee on that and push it back out of the way and then go sleep where it's nice and dry. Right. So, and the rule of thumb on that is they should be able to stand up, turn around, and lay back down again, but not have so much more room than that. Correct. Yes. Absolutely correct. And so the first thing in the morning, you're getting that puppy lickety split out of that crate. But before that happens, let's say you're putting the puppy in for the first time. Yeah. And, and what if it starts? screaming its little lungs out. It's going to whine for sure at first. And even scream. We have a new little Aussie Shepherd puppy mm. that belongs to one of our staff at our facility. Oh. And her name is Meadow. And, and her she's... voice is what? Oh, she's <laughs> Meadow. <laughs> and she wasn't crate training her. She was letting her sleep on the bed. And guess where she was peeing? On her bed. And so I had to sit Alex down and say, Alex, you work for a trainer. Yes, we're running a daycare and you work for the daycare, but you need to crate train this dog. And she looked at me like, you're, you're crazy, Deborah. I put that puppy in a crate and she starts screaming. So Alex was there for a class the other night with her mom, who's enrolled in our advanced meet and greet class with their older dog. And we had to put Meadow in a crate. Well, she did scream folks. Mm-hmm. She scra- screamed at her highest pitch. It was really offensive. It was really upsetting. And it And within 10 minutes, she stopped. But anyway, yes, you're, you're going to need to, to, to suck it up a little bit and let the puppy scream and then let it stop. Or, you know, better yet, you put the puppy in its crate with the door open for a while. And every time you put the puppy in a crate, you precede it with a treat, so it's going in and it's making a very positive association. I go in the crate, I get a treat. The crate must be a wonderful predictor of a treat. Hey, maybe even it manufactures treats. Okay, so let the let the puppy wander in and out of the crate. Um, free will, N- you know, in and out, in and out, in and out. Every time it goes into the crate, suddenly a treat appears. It's a okay? magical, it's a magical, magical world. thing. Yeah, that's right. All right. After a while, it's not going to mind the crate. You'll be able to close the door. Yes. I would put a little sheet or cover over it. Not so that you're suffocating the puppy, but so that it becomes dark. You might want to put it in there with something for it to do, a stuffed Kong. Putting it in there and you're leaving it in there for just, you know, maybe five or ten minutes. And then when you let the dog out, the puppy out, try not to let it out if it's crying. Wait for it to be quiet. and You don't have to wait long. A, a short attention span can work against you and for you. <laughs> Thank you. And so five tip. seconds is all you need. And then you open the crate and you don't say, oh, puppy, I missed you. You just, you keep very quiet so that the puppy starts building up its own sense of well-being and confidence, whether you're there and with it or not. So staging them through this so they can understand Staging. It. I love that mm-hmm. terminology. That's yeah. brilliant, Dina. So yeah, so you're going to put the puppy in the crate now. You're going to put a little cover over it. You're not going to talk to it when you put it in. You're not going to talk to it when you let it out. You're going to let it sort of acclimate to being in there and being with you and without you. And you may do this while you're at home before you actually leave the puppy in the crate alone. So you don't want to force a young puppy to stay in a crate. Like we said, it's their year and months plus one is the absolute limit. Mm -hmm. the most you can leave them in there. And then, of course, as they grow older, they're active and they want to be out doing things. So it can kind of make them a little stir crazy if they're constantly just locked in a small crate. So it's not a forever, but it's an excellent tool. That's right. And so, you know, the, every time you pass the crate at a certain point, you want to throw the treat in there, let them wander in and get it. And the chew training comes in to play here. If you help the puppy associate that if they're going to be in the crate, they're going to get to chew on something. They'll learn that when they're not in the crate, they don't necessarily get to chew on anything. That's Does that right. make sense? Absolutely. And while folks are pondering that to make sure they do get it, why don't you take a moment and add our new sponsors in? I would love to, Dean. Thank Excellent. you. Yes, I'd like to welcome the law offices of Lynn Johnson with a focus on family law since 1983. Lynn's been a past president of the, the Tacoma Pierce County Bar Association and has won many awards for her work. She's recognized in the community for her expertise in helping clients achieve a peaceful resolution in domestic and relationship cases. She was a very early advocate of collaborative law, which is a really big thing now, Dina. And she's also, if need be, a very skillful litigant. So folks, call the law offices of Lynn Johnson if you need a a really great family attorney at area code 253-383-3333. Hard number to forget. 383-33. With the 253. Yeah. And and you'll even get a 10% discount on your first consultation.
consultation. When you mention dog dish, folks, you got to mention dog dish. You got to mention it. Uh, Lynn Johnson is powering her clients with caring education. Um, so just let's review really quick. Folks, don't be afraid to get a crate for your for your puppy or even your adult dog that you rescue mm-hmm. and bring in and, and whose potty training or house training or crate training uh, experiences may be limited. You want to bring in a crate just to make sure that they understand where they're supposed to eliminate, what they're supposed to chew on, and how comfortable they should be when you're with them or not with them. So the best way to do that is get a crate that's their size, meaning just big enough for them to get in and be able to turn around and and resettle themselves and and rule of thumb is you want it only to be big enough so that they that they won't eliminate or soil in their crate and um, you want to get them comfortable with it leave it open throw treats in it every chance you get let them go in and out of their own discretion at will and and really make positive associations with that crate every chance that you get so back to the uh, the crate training. Always always have a treat ready to pop in there, and and uh, you can even praise the dog when it goes in and give it an extra treat if you like. What is a really fun option to help urge that puppy back right into that crate? Bring them to daycare. daycare. No, we have a lot of puppies at daycare right now. In That's fact, we had a new one today named Ellie, Aww. who's a little yellow. I think a yellow lab. I can't tell if it's a yellow lab or a very light colored golden retriever. But in any case, very adorable and. Uh, we're taking care of all of the the potty training during the day when they're with us. But in general, you want to bring them back in, put something in the crate with them for them to do uh, a puzzle toy, a, a treat, uh, a soft Kong, yeah, yeah. a bully stick, something that they can enjoy and occupy their mind and and their mouth. And remember to stage them through this process. Don't uh, lock them in right away. Don't hold them in for hours and hours. Conversely, don't let them out when they whine. Let them out when they're not whining so that you're making the right connections. Bingo. Excellent. Folks, Excellent. this has been Cray Training Your Dog on Dog Dish. Thanks for joining us. For 15 years, Good Citizen Dog has been the premier destination for dog training, dog daycare, dog boarding, and grooming services. Good Citizen uses the most modern, positive, reward-based training techniques. With our two locations in western Washington and across the country, Good Citizen Dog is creating peaceful living with your dog. For more information about services or for franchise information, go to goodcitizendog.com. That's citizen with a Z or call 855-936-3649. That's 855-936-3649.